book can take you anywhere. Turn the pages and you'll be there. Come on, join us, you'll see. We're reading with Kevin Lee. Hi, friends. Thanks for joining me for another Read with Carolee, where we have authors from all around the world. And today we have a very, very wonderful author, and she's actually close to me. So uh, today we have author Marianne Cooper, and she has written the book, The Runaway. Marianne, welcome to the show. Hey guys, so happy to be here. Yes, we're so happy to have you. And like I said, you are very close to me. So I why don't you share with our friends where you are reading to us from today? I am from Ashburn, Virginia. So I am a stone throw away from Washington, DC. So I'm very close to Carrie Lee. So we are, um, actually we got snow on the ground right now and it's yes. really, really cold outside. So yes. I have slippers on and you can't tell, but I'm in PJ pants because it's really, really cold in my house right now. So yeah, so sweatshirt on and everything, but yeah, it's really, really been cold. Well, so. yes, I, yes, I can attest to that. But today I still have on my tutu and I, I have a theater that is right next to me so that I can be warm and toasty right now. But I am so glad that, you know, like you have a beautiful picture of a horse behind you and we're talking about the runaway. So I'm going to turn it over to you and let you jump right into the runaway. Okay. So I'm going to be reading to you guys a book that I wrote and illustrated. All right. And so I'm going to read it to you. And then Carrie Lee and I are going to talk about it after. So I'm just going to jump right into it. This is called The Runaway. In the light of the setting sun sat a boy. The boy was sad. The boy was scared. He longed for nothing more than to run away. He was tired of listening to his parents yell and fight. He was worried about what would happen. He was also tired of his little, little sister who constantly pestered him and broke his toys. She never left him alone. He was tired of being punished whenever he messed up. It was hard not to fight with his sister. Trying to be good all the time was exhausting. Sometimes lying was easier. Sometimes hitting his sister was the easiest way to get her to leave him alone. Finally, he was tired of his ever-growing pile of homework and chores. As the sun slipped further behind the horizon, the boy stood up and glanced back at his house one last time, and then he turned and ran. He pumped his arms and legs as fast as they would allow, but he could not get away fast enough. The wind whipped past his face and he closed his eyes as he leapt over the picket fence that surrounded his home. Instead of landing on his feet, the boy landed on the powerful hooves of a horse that galloped across the field. This was the speed he wanted. He found himself further and further away from his home with each stride and everything he wished to forget. When the boy reached the edge of the field, he saw a wall of giant trees. A horse was no longer equipped for his escape. He jumped into the woods and landed as a massive wolf. The wolf was built for the forest and bounded between the trees and over the rocks effortlessly. The boy arrived at the part of the forest where the, where the vines and overgrowth became too dense. So he vaulted himself into the air. Giant wings sprouted from his body and flew him high into the night sky. His body was a strong eagle and his speed was great. The entire world disappeared below him and nothing was in his way. Before long, he reached the edge of the land where it met the ocean. He did not stop, nor did he slow down. 
Nothing would stop his quest for freedom. No parents, no siblings, and no responsibilities. Instead, he dove headfirst into the cold waves. He turned into a dolphin and continued his journey through the waters. He dodged coral and sped through the sea kelp, swimming deeper and away from the last bit of daylight above. Being a dolphin was not fast enough, so he transformed into one of the fastest sea creatures, the Mako shark. He used all his strength to torpedo himself deeper into the darkness. His home became a distant memory. Once he went as far as he could, he changed back into himself and crawled out of the water onto a deserted island. A large palm tree was the only thing on the island. The boy went over to the tree where he sat and rested. Watching the sun slip behind the horizon, the boy thought of his family. Deep loneliness consumed him. He looked around the island and realized he was completely alone. A cold breeze from the ocean wrapped around him and he suddenly missed his parents' warm hug, hugs when they would put him into bed. He wished his sister were there to play with him and build sandcastles. She was always there when he needed her. With that last thought, the boy ran back into the water. He dove into the waves and his body turned back into the shark, rocketing into the depths of the sea. He missed his sister's giggles and the funny songs she made up. They always helped ease his worries. He swam faster. He moved through the water like a missile, his home being the target. Quickly, he changed back in the dolphin, into the dolphin that started his watery journey. The clever creature easily navigated the reefs at full speed. As he approached the land, he burst through the water's surface as the powerful eagle. He soared swiftly into the darkening sky. As his wings caressed the air, he thought about his mother's gentle words. They always soothed his troubles and brought him peace. She too was always there when he needed her. When the forest came into view, he knew what he needed to do next. His landing was soft as he continued to run through the woods as the wolf. The wind filled his fur and that only made him want to run faster. He neared the edge of the forest and leapt into the air, landing on confident hooves that would take him the rest of the way home. His father's strong words now filled his mind. He was more than a father. He was his coach, teaching him, inspiring him, and making him feel safe. In the distance, his house was illuminated by the last remnants of light. He hurtled himself over the picket fence, his final obstacle, and landed as himself a boy who missed his family. Three figures rushed down and embraced the boy. He was enveloped in his parents' warmth and his sister's hug. At that moment, he realized that the things that troubled him were not as bad as he thought. Perhaps his parents disciplined him because they wanted him to be a better person. Maybe his sister always annoyed him because she wanted to spend time with him. These three people, no matter where they were, would always be his home. As he hugged his family back, he promised that he would try to stop dwelling on everything that worried him. Instead, he would be strong like the horse, brave like the wolf, smart like the eagle, carefree like the dolphin, and patient like the shark. The end. Well, that goes to show, you know, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. And sometimes we may get frustrated, but it's not always the best to run away. And that was a great lesson that the boy learned. And, you know, being with his family, that, that was such a very warm and vivid. And I loved the imagery. <laughs> in all your words and of course the artwork in this book so before we get to that though 
what was your reasoning for writing this book? All right, so I have four children. They are all in elementary school. Mm -hmm. And nowadays it seems like kids are forced to grow up so fast, you know, yeah. like, I mean, they're just put in the, you know, so many like different kinds of situations. You've got divorce on the rise. You've got like, you know, kids being shipped back and forth. You've got parents mm -hmm. that fight, you've got homework, you've got this, you got that. You, you've got so many different things that kids go through. And not to mention the past two years. <laughs> I mean, look at COVID right now. I mean, yeah. you got kids that, you know, have to stay home and do work on the computer. I mean, look at all this. And this was even before I wrote the book. And, you know, when I wrote this book, I was actually had my oldest daughter in mind. And, um, you know, uh, I'm actually, I'm actually newly, uh, well, not newly married, I'm remarried. And so my children actually have to go, they go see their, their father once a month. And, um, and so when I wrote this, I was actually divorced and I was thinking about my oldest daughter and just kind of what she was thinking about, like, you know, what she was going through, like, you know, like, you know, the experience of, you know, of, you know, loss and, you know, and just being, you know, you know, seven years old and, and, you know, her and her sister fighting and, you know, and I was laying in bed and this is how this happened. Okay. So I was laying in bed and I was actually staring at this painting. Okay. So this is a painting that I did. Okay. And I, at this painting, and I was like thinking of my daughter and just how hurt I was for her. And I, it just like came to me and I'm like, if I was her, I would want to run away from it all, you know? And I'm like, you know, I would want, want to run away. I would want to run away from it all. And I'm like, but you know, how can I just, you know, talk to them and, and explain to them that, you know, we have their best interest in heart. You know, we still love them no matter what situation we're in, you know, whether your parents are together, whether they're not, whether, you know, you have homework, whether we give you chores, whether you're, you know, you're, you fight with your sisters, whether you fight with your brothers, you know, we still love you, you know, yeah. and we are your home, whether you have two homes, whether you have one home. Uh -huh. And, um, and so the reason I decided to do the illustrations in a silhouette form is so that when children read this book, they can put themselves in that picture. There's no, yeah. you can't see the face. Uh -huh. So they can see them as them. That's, that's me. That's me. Yeah. And, and then my daughter asked me, she's like, now, did he really run away? Or was that all in his head? And I asked her, what do you think? What do you think? Was he wanting to run away? Did he think about that? Did uh -huh. he dream it? Or did he really do it? I don't know. That's up to you to decide. Oh, that's so, awesome. That's awesome for, you know, children to be able to put themselves into the book and also, you know, make that distinction. Did he really run away or was this all in his mind? So it, it kind of challenges them to really think about it. I love that. Exactly. I mean, and, you know, the perspective, like, you know, I hate chores. I hate chores, but, you know, it's going to make you stronger when you get older, you know, yeah. and same with homework and school, that's going to make you smarter yeah. when you're older. You know what I mean? You know, like, you know, with my two older daughters, I have an 11 year old and a nine year old, they have this love hate relationship. And my nine year old is always pestering my 11 year old to play with her, but she's like, she pushes her buttons to do so, <laughs> but she does it. Because she wants to play with her because she loves her. Yeah. And that's what my 11 year old sometimes doesn't get. And it's like, stop, 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 uh -huh. stop. And I'm like, she's doing it because she loves you. You yeah, know, absolutely. And that thing. And it's like, just, it's just the way you think about it. You know, it's your perspective on life, you know? Yeah. And so, and back, back to the painting, 
the reason I came up with the idea of him, instead of just running away as a boy and everything like that, I'm like, let me put a little fantasy element to it, you know? And, you know, let me, let me add a little bit of fantasy. How cool would it be to be running away, you know, in, in different, like in, in different ways, like, you know, like in, in his mind, is he running away? Or uh, again, is, it, is he really running away? Is he really running away like this? Or yeah. is it in his mind? Again, that's up um, to the reader's perspective, you know? So, and so, so this, this painting is actually one of the illustrations in the book. Yeah. So, and okay, so yeah. to get back to your background also, with these paintings and illustrations that you made in the in the book so you are an art teacher i am yes yes so i um i've taught everything from kindergarten through high school right now i'm teaching high school okay um, and, uh, teaching high school i'll be teaching middle school in a few months so i'm jumping in between jobs right now uh -huh. and um, so and I, I love doing it. I love inspiring kids to find their passion and using it as a way of like almost like therapy, you know, because yeah. art can be such a way of just, you know, um, you know, using a way of like taking your emo emotions and just releasing it and putting it on paper, putting it on canvas and stuff. And yeah. you know, and I just love people, you know, I love kids just like getting it. You know what I mean? Like I can do that. Like I can, I can get it or just it's uh -huh. fascinating. I love it. So, yeah. Yeah. And so with all of the artwork that you're doing and with you writing this book, were, were there any books that inspired you when you were growing up to either become an artist or, you know, even on your journey as an author now? Actually, I started writing books before I could actually write words. So when I okay. was a child, I had a little recorder, okay? A little yellow red recorder. Uh -huh. And I would draw pictures, I would draw pictures. And then after I drew all the pictures and stapled it together, I would record the story on my little red recorder. Oh, and wow. I think my parents have them, which is awesome. My, my parents still have them and they still quote from these stories from back when I was like four and five years old. Oh, wow. But the, funny, the funniest thing is that is how I wrote this story. I did the illustrations first. Uh -huh. Then I actually, because I knew the story, how it was going to be in my head, but I painted everything first. Then I went back and wrote the words to match the pictures, which is the opposite of how most people actually do the children's books. Uh -huh. Normally, you have the manuscript done, you have it edited, then you go back and either illustrate it or pay someone to illustrate it. And yeah. I just did it backwards, which is how I did it from the beginning. But I've, I've heard a lot of people say, this reminds me of The Runaway Bunny by, by Margaret Wise Brown. I'm like, I love that book when I was a kid. Maybe that was like in my conscious mind. And I'm like, I don't know. well, Maybe that's why I kind of like, I, I loved that story growing up and I can see the resemblance of the bunny running away and the mom chasing the bunny. And I'm like, and I have babies and I would absolutely chase my babies across the world in whatever shape or form, you know, they take. And so, yeah. Yeah, that, but, that's great. And I would love to hear some of those stories that you have from when you were little. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you the title of one of them. The title of one of them was A Cat Named Purple. A cat named I don't know where a cat named purple, the color of your tutu. Yes, a cat named purple. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'm I mean I'm sure they have it somewhere. And well, you know what? Like that I said, goes to show that goes to show that you had that artistic mind from that age especially since you were right um, drawing the pictures then and like the cat a cat named purple that's that's okay. just oh <laughs> that, that, that's like, the artist in you yeah. and it was the cat went through adventures and all this stuff and it's like but I did the pictures first and it's like I would look at the pictures and then come up with the story which was yeah strange because most people don't do it that way I'm like well, you know, I guess I'm an oddball, but you know, <laughs> and that's how I did it. So that's how I did this one. I did the illustrations first and I actually have some examples. So I actually started, you know, with backgrounds first for uh -huh. these 
And then from the backgrounds, then I would do the foregrounds in the silhouette. Okay. And that's how I did all these illustrations. And I did oh, 18 wow. of them. I did 18 of them. Yes. And from there, I laid them all out on the floor. And that's when I sat there and would actually wrote the manuscript by sitting on the floor, looking at all the illustrations. That is yeah. amazing. And, and that, that it's, it's great to, you know, have that art, artistic ability to be able to do your illustrations yourself. And, you know, we've had a few, uh, We've had a few um, authors that have done their illustrations as well. And it's just so wonderful to be able to that be that multi-talented. And children can definitely, you know, think of um, starting their story by drawing the pictures. And I love that because it's not there's not just one way for you to become an author or for you to write a story. No right or wrong way. And that's one of the yeah. things I teach my art students because I have art students, especially middle schoolers. They come to me and they're like, um, why am I taking art? I don't want to be a painter when I grow up. I'm like, what do you mean you don't want to be a painter when you grow up? There's so many art jobs. Yeah. I mean, look around you. Art is in everything. Somebody designed this sweatshirt. Somebody exactly. designed my earrings. I mean, art is in everything, you know? Yes. And, and I mean... And that's what I like to push. I'm like, I mean, there's so many different jobs in art. Illustrations, guys. Come on yeah. now. <laughs> I I'm mean, like, art, you, art is in everywhere. everything we do, like even decorating your house. You know? really interior design. Exactly. Exterior design. Everywhere. Yeah. And it's like when they get that, they're like, whoa oh. really? <laughs> I'm like, those video games you play, guys, those video yeah. games artists designed those video games and they're like yeah oh my god i want to be an artist so i can do that i'm like uh -huh. my job's done. my job's done there you go yeah, <laughs> yeah like absolutely and that is such a great gift that you give back to your students and that you give back to the world with your art and with your books and I am just so glad to have you on. And you know what? I think I'm, I really, really want you, you to come back with the book, A Cat Named Purple. <laughs> oh my gosh, I need to find it. I need to find it. But I actually do have another book coming out in two oh. days. Can I show you? Can I show you? Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So I have this book coming out in two days. It's called oh. Try It Stop Me. Now I didn't do these illustrations. I know, I'm sorry. I don't do graphic design yet. I'm uh -huh. like, when it comes to technology, I'm yeah. like, <laughs> but, I do. but I wrote, okay. So I wrote this book with my late sister three years ago. Okay. Wow. So okay. this book is about empowering girls to become powerful women. Oh, so yes. you may have to have me on the show again. With yes, this book. Have to have you back. Back, back, back. so this is out in two days and i'm so excited to share this book and there will be a boy version as well so just letting oh, you know awesome. i'm so excited so yes so yeah, I'm absolutely. So excited. well it has so been such a joy to have you on mary you. cooper and we thank will you. be looking for try and stop me as well as the runaway thank you so much <laughs> yes well friends we have come to another end of a read with carolee show you just make sure that you drop by every saturday and remember to hit that subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss another fabulous author that will be coming by every weekend. Until then, remember to grab a book and read. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.